Hello, this is Dr. Behrang Asgarian. I am an associate professor at Washington State University. I am also a licensed professional engineer, PE, in the state, in the state of Washington, and my area of expertise is thermal fluids. Uh, we're gonna solve one uh, problem, external flow over a flat plate. Before watching this video, um, the, take a look at the links in the description where uh, there are two videos where I completely went over the uh, local friction coefficient for laminar and turbulent and average friction coefficient for five different categories of problems of external flow uh, over a flat plate. So make sure you check out those videos first, then come here and you'll see everything will make sense to you, basically. And uh, so we're going to look at this problem. We're going to see what category this problem is and what equations we have to use. Uh, in the videos that I mentioned in the description, you know, I categorized everything and I gave all the equations and everything. So uh, that's why I, I'm telling you to go watch that video first before, you know, watching this video. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the problem. Let's see if we can solve it. Go ahead and um, read this problem. Okay, we're supposed to find the total drag force on one side of this flat plate. It says on top of this plate, so you don't have to multiply, you know, the drag force by two or anything. You just find on one one side of it, and it says it's a smooth flat plate because it is a smooth, and it doesn't say the boundary layer is stripped or anything. Um, we just need to calculate Reynolds number to see in what category this is going to fall. It might be category one or category two or maybe it's outside of all these ranges, then it becomes category five. And then uh, we have to take a look at that graph, the, the chart that we have for um, the you know, uh, external flow over a flat plate. So the first step is to calculate Reynolds number for this case. So let's see what we have. We have uh, the flat plate. This is our flat plate basically. And uh, so this is the velocity. Velocity is given at two meters per second. And L here is given as 300 millimeters. I have to convert it to meters because everything has to be basic as I units. The width of the plate is given. The width is given as 900 millimeters, which is basically 0.9, uh, not watts, millimeters, uh, meters. So this is the plate we are um, dealing with basically. And we want to find the total drag force on this. Okay, first step, let's calculate Reynolds number. Because it's liquid water, it says liquid water here. So I'm going to use density um, 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed, basic as I units. So density would be 1,000 uh, kilograms per meters cubed. Viscosity is given. So Reynolds L would be rho times V times L over mu. And so I would have, I will have 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed times um, velocity is given as two meters per second, two meters per second. Then uh, what else is given? The length is given as 0.3 meters, 0.3 meters. And viscosity is given as 0, 0, 0.01567 Pascal second. Pascal second is also a basic SI. Um, you can go ahead and calculate this to see if this number is correct. I already calculated these values. So it is 382 two and um, seven, nine, four. Make sure everything is in basic SI. So if, for example, you use millimeters instead of meters, you're gonna get some huge value for Reynolds number, which is incorrect. And it's gonna just mess up the, the whole um, you know, equations and uh, the solution you're gonna pick for it. Now you can see that this number is less than five times 10 to the fifth. And because it is smooth and boundary layer is not tripped or anything, this is a fully, laminar um, you know, flow from the beginning to the end of the plate. So this falls into category one. Category one is when it is fully laminar. So I can easily solve this problem now. You can go back to you know, that video I mentioned, uh, we can find the link in the description and find the value of average, the equation for the average friction coefficient for laminar flow, category one. Category one for laminar flow, you know, the average friction coefficient is 
to eight over the square root of Reynolds L. And a lot of books basically they just you know show this by one three three over the square root of Reynolds L like this. Now that we have uh, these numbers, we can basically just uh, calculate the, the friction coefficients. Friction coefficient average would be one three three. Um, let me do a better job writing this. One three three um, over the square root of three eight two seven nine four. And um, make sure you calculate this. I already calculated this value. It turns out to be 0 0.0.00215. And of course, you know, friction coefficient is dimensionless. So you want to calculate the value of um, the drag force. The drag force in this case would be CF average times dynamic pressure, dynamic pressure, that's uh, dynamic pressure times the total area. So um, let's see what we have here. The friction coefficient is zero to mm, one five, like this, times dynamic pressure one over two times one thousand kilograms per meters cubed, times velocity squared. That would be two squared. That would be meters seconds squared, basically the unit of this, and uh, times area. Area is a point three meters times 0.9 meters, like this. So finally, you calculate this whole thing and um, the drag force turns out to be uh, 1.161 Newton. And I'm, uh, I definitely encourage you to watch those videos to see what I'm talking about when I say category one, and then everything will make sense to you. So, um, well, thank you very much. And, um, Make sure you subscribe to this channel because I try to upload uh, one video a day in the area of uh, fluid mechanics, heat transfer, thermodynamics, thermal system design, you know, pumps, everything.